We're going to get some analysis on this and speak to Vanessa Newman. There she is. She's a Latin America analyst, and she's also CEO of the think tank Asymmetrica. Joining us from New York, good to talk to you on the news grid. Uh, if I may start with what's happening in Venezuela, has the controversy surrounding the Supreme Court decision yes. now been resolved, now that the Supreme Court seems to have taken a step back away from its original decision? No, not at all. Uh, for point of reference, I am actually from Venezuela, so um, I, I tend to track these events quite closely. Uh, what has happened, the real backstory of what has happened is that the Supreme Court wasn't a decision by the Supreme Court. It was actually drafted by one man called Michael Moreno, who really wields, uh, who really wields power. And he, he, he writes the Supreme Court decisions and posts them on the website, and the magistrates are actually really informed. He's very much in the pocket of the presidential palace. And from what we can tell, this had to do with uh, the ability to sign joint venture deals for oil exploration, particularly deals with Rosneft, uh, for, to exploit the, uh, the Orinoco belt. So since the National Assembly was not signing the deal, they took back that power so that the Supreme Court could do it. Uh, but it still raises the question of that there is no rule of law, that it's arbitrary. And the only reason why they officially took it back is because the rest of the magistrates didn't agree, and now the rest of Latin America has been lining up against Venezuela. Vanessa, we also know that there have been protests going on in Venezuela. Hang on with us for just a second, because we'll get a live update from, uh, from our reporter, Alessandro Rampietti. He's joining us from Cucuta. That's near Colombia's border with Venezuela. Give us the, uh, the scene in Venezuela, Alessandro. Well, on Friday, we've seen uh, some protests happening. Students from local university trying to reach the building of the uh, Supreme uh, Court there. And also, we saw dozens of other uh, Venezuelans who support the opposition uh, blocking uh, one of the major expressways across uh, the country. More protests were called today because many of the leaders of the opposition are saying that this uh, reversal is not enough. It's too little, too late. We'll have to see how many of them will actually uh, show up because uh, in the last uh, few years, things were getting worse uh, in Venezuela. We haven't seen so much of a presence of people willing uh, uh, to take to the streets and the protests after essentially the failure of the major protests in 2012 where 43 people died and not much had uh, changed in uh, the country. So we'll have to see what happens today on that front. Okay, Alessandro, thank you for giving us that update. Vanessa, you heard what Alessandro was saying there about the opposition, but we've seen the opposition divided yes. on many occasions when it yes. comes to Venezuela. Uh, will they unite here? How, how will they take this forward? Well, it's, that's exactly the problem, is that there's a crisis of confidence, not just, in, uh, not just in the government, but also in the opposition. It's lacking strong leadership. What has happened is that the one who would really win the elections is Leopoldo Lopez, who's in prison. His wife, Lilian Tintori, has a bit sort of taken on almost like a Winnie Mandela kind of role, right? While Nelson was in prison, she became sort of a, a leader. And she has been invited everywhere from the White House to also to uh, Buenos Aires and various other... Uh, capitals that have actually spoken out against what has happened uh, in Venezuela. Uh, but there, there's a failure to there's a failure to to lead and to coalesce around one uh, uh, around one political leader. So they're trying to get the one who would win the elections out of prison. And uh, until they until they manage that, there's there's just not there. There isn't going to be uh, an ability to uh, to, to coalesce the opposition forces behind them. And also, they showed their hand. They, tipped, they were weak. When they won the two-thirds supermajority in the National Assembly, they allowed the government to, to eliminate three, three of their candidates uh, on some minor technicality, which basically took away the National Assembly's supermajority, which meant that then that took away a lot of their legislative power. And that was, that was their probing. And they've been weak in fighting the government ever since. Right. And, so why should and, people go out to protest? What they have to do is find food. Let's then turn our attention to Paraguay, because there seems to be another political crisis going on there. Uh, you know, a lot of people wondering why the Senate in Paraguay would approve this proposed constitutional amendment to allow the president to run uh, for a second term 
and then to vote for it in secret. What do you make of that? <laughs> I, uh, well, I, I make of it that Horacio Cortes is actually wielding a lot of power behind the, uh, you know, behind the walls, which is, of course, now becoming increasingly unpalatable. And the whole case of Venezuela, for instance, has become a cautionary tale about staying in power too long. So uh, what I make of that is Horacio Cortes is quite a controversial figure. He's wanted by many law enforcement authorities, from Interpol to, uh, to the DEA, suspected he's, he's a known smuggler of uh, tobacco and narcotics, and a very wealthy man. So I think uh, people are suspecting that there's a lot of uh, machinations and corrupt deals being made to keep him in power. Uh, the irony is the other side also wants to reverse the Constitution, but seeing what has happened in Venezuela and other countries where the Constitution has been amended is a cautionary tale. And in Brazil, uh, meanwhile, perhaps we will put up the pictures of Brazil in just a moment. We saw protesters coming out there. They're angry at the reform of the law on pensions and retirement that's been proposed by the government. The government uh, saying they're necessary to pull the country out of recession. Who's right here? Uh, well, they are necessary to pull the country out of recession and having a major recession uh, partly caused by the Petrobras Lava Jato scandal. And words, the Petrobras's books were totally cooked, which has caused the pricing of sovereign debt. A lot of the money was stolen by the Workers' Party. Um, which is, of course, had established a paternalistic system and controls the labor unions. That's Dilma Rousseff's party, that's Lula's party, um, and that and Temer was uh, has taken over from uh, after the impeachment of Dilma. So there is an accusation that the Temer is not a legitimate president because he was not elected. He was the result of taking over from an impeachment, so he's right wing. So that already causes problems, and nobody likes austerity measures, but they need it because of the history of corruption that has nearly bankrupted the country. All right, Vanessa Newman, we thank you for speaking to us on the news grid.